Hey, what about that Thai joint we always go to? This is the problem with New York. Too much choice. You know, you should have brought... Oh, my God, what was that? Hey! Call 911. Oh, my God, Robbie, be careful! It's a business trip, and I finished early. So I figured I'd stop and pick something up for my wife. How's the owner? Mr. Baker didn't make it. See, that's what you get for being a nice guy. Going out of your way. What do you mean, Mr. Fordyce? Well, he was closing up, and he let me stay and browse because he knew I was heading to Chicago in the morning. And then this punk. I just got these babies in, right off the boat, if you know what I mean. Estate sale. Well, somebody died? Wow, now you're talking. Look, you put these earrings together, I'll give you a price. How about I take the whole lot? You buy in bulk and save. Yep, he's the one who sold me the stuff, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Krakow. Detective Briscoe says you have fingerprints on another witness. There's no such thing as too much evidence. Take your time now. Oh, no need. Number four. I'll never forget that face as long as I live. And the person who sold you this jewelry, do you see him in the courtroom today? Yeah, he's over there, the uh, defendant. The people request a recess, Your Honor. What seems to be the problem, Mr. McCoy? Our final witness, Mr. Glenn Fordyce, is coming in from Chicago. His plane must have been delayed. Fordyce never got on the plane. Well, get him on the red eye. We need him here tomorrow morning. I can't. He's gone. What do you mean, gone? He called his office, said he needed to take some time off, that he and his wife were going on a car trip. You, your client, somebody got to my witness. No wonder Mr. Trovanza has such faith in the jury system. Have you reached a verdict? We have. On the first count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, how do you find? We find the defendant not guilty. <sighs> You don't seriously suspect the Russian mob. A key witness doesn't just conveniently disappear, Arthur, especially one who has a chance to put the man who shot him behind bars. What'd you find out? The Chicago police pulled Fordyce's blood, searched his apartment, his clothes, his wife's clothes, all gone. Maybe your boy just got a bad case of stage fright. I don't think so. His prints in his apartment matched someone named Levi March. He has a record. For killing Abby Sherman. You know who he is? You think that's possible after all these years? Why not? Everybody's got to be somewhere. What are we talking about? Glenn Fordyce is the Griffin. In 1983, the Griffin was front page news. Every era has its gurus. So this is all that we have. He killed his girlfriend, Abby Sherman, beat her to death with a blunt object. Allegedly. Oh, he did it. The jury said so. I thought he should get bail. Well, he did. He was tried in absentia. So why would a judge let a man like that out on bail? You know, it's hard to say no when you ask for a cool mill up front and they write you out a check on the spot. I didn't know March had that kind of money. Nah, his old man. Levi never worked a day in his life. And that's the last we hear of him until about 10 years ago. We get this anonymous tip that he shacked up with some local talent up in Montreal. Will's what you call old school. You mean prehistoric, hello? But entertaining in a Neanderthal sort of way. Hey, Fordyce has a 91 Chevy Camaro. A little extra horsepower helps when you're on the run. Yeah, spell that. All right, cool. It was registered under Mr. and Mrs. Fordyce, but the wife's driver's license has the name Anne-Marie Gautreau. And you're thinking she's the local talent from Montreal? Mm -hmm. Was it Gabrielle Simone, Anne-Marie's attorney. Oh, I might have known. A lawyer's a lawyer anywhere in the world. And so's a cop. Let's cut to the chase. I love Glenn, but I'm tired. This is no way to live. My sister got married. I missed the wedding. She's got two kids I've never met. My parents died, and I didn't even know. How do you say we're screwed in French? I guess that's how. He's on the fire escape. I thought griffins could fly. Two words, kangaroo court. Evidence was presented, witnesses testified. You represented him, if memory serves. I was young. I was naive. And now? 
I'm old enough to realize just how naive I was for letting the state proceed with that farce. This is a municipal building, Marvin. Heil McCoy. So what do you say? We call it man two, time served? What time? 20 years Levi had to deny his own existence. He could have turned himself in. For something he didn't do. Heil to you too. Murder to 25. He's 55 years old. That's a life sentence. And Abby Sherman would be 45 if she'd lived, if Levi March hadn't killed her. I was hoping you'd take this position. Now I get to correct the mistake I made 20 years ago. What's done cannot be undone, Marvin. Oh, yes, it can. That's what appellate courts are for. Similarly, the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment implicitly guarantees a defendant the right to a fair and impartial trial. That's all very interesting, but you're appealing a decision rendered over 20 years ago. The last I look, this state required notice of appeal within 60 days of a verdict. With all due respect, Your Honor, cart before the horse, if the original trial was unconstitutional, there was no verdict. Always the clever one, Mr. Silverman. How could you have lost? He killed my sister. We already proved it in court. Appellate courts look at the law, Mrs. Carmody, and not the people it affects. This has been going on for 20 years. It ruined my family. It killed my parents, literally. We convicted him once. I'm confident we'll convict him again. You that sanguine? Of course not. 20-year-old case. Evidence goes astray, witnesses die. You wouldn't want it to be too easy, would you? Detective Ashman. Remembers it like it was yesterday. Mr. and Mrs. Sherman, both dead. Thomas Steiner. A neighbor, he died last year. Trish Tippins. Abby Sherman's best friend. She moved to Europe after the first trial. You know, it's a shame, too, because Mrs. Sherman testified that Abby told her that she was going to leave Levi because she came home and found him in bed with her friend Trish. There's a quote. I'm leaving him, although I'm afraid he might kill me if I do. There's your motive. We'll read Mrs. Sherman's testimony into evidence. And between that, the detective's testimony and forensics, Levi March will go to prison for the rest of his life. At this time, Your Honor, the people would like to read into evidence the testimony of Mrs. Vera Sherman. Chambers, Judge. Hearsay, best evidence, take your pick. The witness is deceased, Your Honor. Who's your witness? That trial was an unconstitutional violation of my client's rights, ergo, the verdict was void, ergo, the trial never took place, ergo, Mrs. Sherman never testified. That is absurd. Defense counsel's welcome to read his own cross-examination of the witness from the first trial into evidence if he likes. What witness? I don't see a witness. Mm. I don't either. Who killed Abby Sherman? Well, what you have to know is that at that time, I was a very high-profile person. I spoke truths a lot of people didn't want to hear. Like what? Like the marriage of corporate America and the American government, like the conspiracy of greed and power that controls each and every human being on this planet. I spoke the truth back then. People were starting to listen. Are you saying the American government killed Abby Sherman? Yes. The CIA? The FBI? They killed John, didn't they? John Kennedy? John Lennon. So Mark David Chapman was working for the government? It's so sad. You're, you're a part of the conspiracy, and you don't even know it. You're a dupe, Mr. McCoy. How in this world of uncertainty can you be so damn sure? They told me. Told you? Who told you? A retired black ops agent. Black ops? Illegal covert operations. He called me in Chicago last year and apologized for killing Abby. What was this man's name? He couldn't tell me. Classified. I just went over the LUDs pulled from March's Chicago phone. Please don't tell me there was a call from Langley. No, but there were quite a few to and from a P. Tippins. Tippins? Trish Tippins. Patricia, the one Abby Sherman caught March in bed with. I'll tell you what, it's March's girlfriends who ought to be paranoid. Actually, I was thinking more about his wife. I don't, I don't understand. Who cares about an affair I had 20 years ago? This is a list of phone calls between your husband and Patricia Tippins over the past two years. There are hundreds of them. If you look closely, you'll see that the area code is 312. Chicago, isn't it, where you've been living the past two years? <laughs> 
You never even stopped seeing her, did you? Even while I'm pregnant, you were still screwing her. They're lying, Anne-Marie. We will talk about it later. Do you know what he told me? He told me that he killed that girl, Abby. That he killed her, and he put her body in the fireplace. He took murder, too, the max. 25 to life? I would have rolled the dice with the jury. You didn't have a felony escape charge hanging over your head with sentences to run consecutively. This way, he has at least a theoretical chance at parole. Do you really think he told Amory he committed the murder? I think she proved his point. This time, finally, someone was out to get him. <laughs>